Hi guys, it's Tom here, and today I'm making a guide where I talk about trade in the game of Rune Total War. So trade, uh, at its most basic level, is just uh, sending things from one settlement to another. Now this can be internal trade between, uh, let's say, Thapsus and Carthage. You can see these little uh, wagons moving. Uh, that signifies uh, trade between Thapsus and Carthage. And uh, you can have land trade as you see there, or you can have sea trade. You see these guys here heading towards a port, they're getting onto a ship and they're actually being exported down to Lilybaeum. And uh, first of all for land trade, uh, the, mo the primary factor here really is the level of roads. You can see I've got a, uh, got a stone road here, and uh, again a stone road going down here, which uh, facilitates a lot of trade. Whereas these uh, these very basic uh, dirt roads, or even no roads at all, it makes trade very, very slow. So if you upgrade your roads, not only do you get improved movement, but you get improved trade as well. And uh, you don't just have to trade within your own faction. You can actually go to uh, other factions and uh, get a trade agreement with them. And that means you can then export your stuff to, uh, to their territories. And... Um, you can make money that way as well. It can be very profitable to get uh, trade agreements with people if you're not going to go to war with them. Moving on to uh, to sea trade, in order to conduct this, you actually need to have a port where you're exporting from, and you need a port where you're importing to as well, otherwise you can't do it. And uh, sea trade is actually very profitable indeed. And uh, you start off with only one trade route. Uh, with just the basic port, but then as you move to a shipwright, that's the next level of port, you get two trade routes. You can see here that I'm uh, exporting to Lily Bay, and I'm exporting to Syracuse. And how this typically works is that um, sea trade uh, happens to the to the two richest cities that are nearby to uh, to where your settlement you're exporting from is. Uh, which means that some ports in the game are better than others. For example, if I go over here to Pergamum, I can uh, export here to places like Byzantium, uh, to Athens, uh, Cor uh, Corinth, uh, Sparta, that sort of thing. Uh, that, that makes this a very good port. I can export down here to Rhodes as well. These ports can be very profitable, whereas... Uh, if we were to go down to uh, Thebes, which is somewhere around here, you can't quite see it yet, uh, the port is actually over here, I believe, and you can't really export to anywhere there, so it's, it's not a very good port. So I've covered land trade, uh, I've covered sea trade. Uh, the next thing I want to cover is valuable resources on the map. So um, I mentioned before in a different video about uh, grain resources on the map, but that's not the only type of resource. You see them dotted around the map. You have things like olive oil, uh, wine, if you go over here. Palma has a lot of things. It has uh, marble and wine. If you go over to Cordoba, it has gold mines, it has wine and olive oil, two lots of olive oil. So this is actually a very good place to get a port. I mean, I'm also exporting uh, animal goods. And if I go on uh, Cordoba real quick, I can see how much money I'm making from trade. Almost 3,000 gold a turn I'm making from trade. That's enormous. And uh, if I go down here, uh, you can actually see exactly what uh, the imports and the exports are. Like, uh, you can see here that for the land trade, I'm making, you know, almost uh, 600 a turn from like gold, olive oil and wine, and then silver as well, and pottery and all this sort of thing. And then uh, through sea, that's going to Tingi, because that's the nearest port. I'm getting copper, wild animals and timber. And then, uh, so that's the sea import. And sea exports, I'm exporting gold, olive oil and wine. So I'm making a huge amount of money there. If I compare that to, uh, to a settlement that has a lot less things, for example, uh, Apollonia down here, I mean, there's almost nothing here. Uh, it's, a, it's a much smaller settlement, granted. But if I if I look here, I'm uh, importing a bit of gold, which is uh, you know sort of internal trade. But my total trade income is only 78. And if you look, uh, I don't actually have a port here, so ports massively increase your trade income. 
and uh, to a certain extent also things like uh, like markets increase your, your trading income but definitely ports I'd say are the way to go because you can import and export things from your rich cities that are far away I also wanted to talk about uh, rebels and the effect that they have on trade so you can see that there's a rebel army here and uh, he's actually standing on the road and what he does is he uh, slows down or entirely prevents trade that's going on on that road as you can see here I would be making a certain amount from trade here but uh, he's actually losing me 200 denarii a turn uh, because you can see that sort of faded that means that's what he's preventing there so uh, he's costing me money and uh, if I dealt with him I would potentially not be losing that money anymore, although uh, rebels do tend to stand and unblock your roads, which is another reason why, why ports are so strong. And uh, finally, on certain factions, if you uh, show settlement details, uh, sorry, show the, the buildings browser, you can see um, certain temples, I believe it's the Temple of Milkart, actually uh, increases the amount of trade that goes on. And uh, you can make additional money by using this. But uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of this. For instance, um, while over here I might have uh, a temple of... Uh, let's see, I have a large temple of Milkart here, which is massively increasing the amount of trade I'm getting here. If we, um, if we look again, it's making 2900 a turn. But look, I'm actually losing 2500 in corruption because uh, my capital is in Rome. This is quite far away, so I lose a lot of money in corruption. And uh, so what I'm gaining in trade, I'm almost losing in in corruption, which is why um, why law is so important. And if I had the Temple of Bull, yes, I wouldn't get the increase from the Temple, but uh, at the same time, I'd have a lot more law, which means corruption is decreased. So it sort of swings and roundabouts. I tend to favor law quite highly, which is why in my next video, I'm going to go over law, what it is, how important it is so uh if you want to see that uh you know go ahead and subscribe and uh you'll see that video next time okay thank you for watching bye